Good morning. For those of you who may not recognize me, I'm Deacon Mike Simons and I'm Jean's youngest son. I want to thank everyone for celebrating this Mass for our mother Jean with us and especially give a thanks to Father Vincent for giving me this opportunity to preach today and for ministering to our mother these past few years along with Deacon Jack. Now, we may have all heard the old saying that the only thing constant is change, and that includes our relationship with others. And over time, those, the closeness of those relationships determine how much influence, positive or negative, those people have in our lives and to what degree. So I'm sure all of us here today would agree that our mother Jean was one of those people who positively and profoundly affected the lives of others throughout her 90 years on this earth. For me, that is certainly the case, as she brought me to Mass the week I was born, straight from the hospital, and I'm sure that was the case for my brothers and sisters also. She taught us to pray almost before we could walk, and her devotion to our Blessed Mother was obvious and constant, as we prayed the rosary together almost every day of our youth. When someone asked her one time why we pray the rosary so much, she said, because the family that prays together stays together. And that certainly showed in the closeness of our families for so many years. You know, our mom, Jean, really, rarely missed an opportunity to, to adore Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. And I remember one morning being awakened by my father at 2.30 a.m., to go to the church and find out what happened to mom because she hadn't returned from adoration yet. And, and most importantly, when I got there, she was praying in front of the monstrance by herself because no one else had come to visit for hours and there was no way she would ever leave Jesus alone and exposed. And if I hadn't gone there so she could go and find someone, I know she would have stayed there all night. That's how I know that our mom, Jean, would be the first to tell us the truth that any positive influence or effect that she's had on us and others in this life was not because of who she was or what she did, but because of the merits of Jesus Christ and her relationship with him through her Catholic faith. And because of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we don't mourn her today as if we have no hope. But instead, we confidently commend Jean Simons to the mercy of God, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever unchanging. And because he is always the same and unchanging, we are able to look back to Christ and towards the past in thanksgiving for the many blessings that our mom Jean received in her life, especially through the sacraments of the church which is how God raises his family spiritually by grace from cradle to grave in faith, hope, and love. In baptism, she was brought to new life and became a daughter of God. In the Eucharist, she was nourished, she was nourished by Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity, truly present in the form of bread and wine. She was healed in the confessional and by the anointing of the sick and on so many occasions throughout her life. And at her confirmation, she was strengthened by the grace of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit to successfully lead others to Christ, which was something she did very well. In the sacrament of matrimony, she enjoyed 59 years with our dad and the rest of the family they raised together along with the countless number of other people's children she helped raise through the years. Some of them are here today. One thing I, I want to do is tell you that most, most importantly, we have to look back and with thanksgiving for Christ's death and resurrection in the hope that our mom, Jean, may be enjoying eternal life in heaven as we speak. But at the same time, we look to Jesus today in this present moment 
and prayed for the repose of her soul because although she believed and loved God and her neighbor probably better than anyone I've ever known, as a human being, she still did so imperfectly. As a matter of fact, the last note that we have in our mom's own handwriting reads, Don't forget me at Masses. <laughs> so here we are today not forgetting her at Mass as we lend our prayers of petition for Jean Simons that God in his mercy will free her from any residual effects of sin. And we should not allow our admiration for her apparent holiness in this life to deter us in any way from our responsibility as her family and friends to pray and offer masses for her in the hope that her soul is purified of all that is not Christ, so that she may enter heaven swiftly. And after that, any prayers or masses that we offer for her, we trust that she will present them at the throne of God for our benefit and holiness. So now that we've looked towards the unchanging Christ yesterday and today, we need to look to him for our eternity, which means we need to consider our own mortality and how fragile and fleeting our lives are in this world. And then we should ask ourselves if we are ready to meet our maker or not. Because apart from God willing it, we are not even assured our next breath. So as we celebrate God's goodness and mercy to our mom, Jean, let's allow this encounter with Christ here at this Mass to change us. To allow God's grace to call us to repentance, to turn away from sin and seek Christ's forgiveness by forgiving others before it is too late. I said before, the only thing constant is change. But that doesn't apply to God because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Mass is the greatest prayer we can offer for Jean, ourselves, and the world. And whenever we, as Christ's body, the church, participate in the Mass, our prayers become not just our prayers, but Jesus' prayers to the Father by the Holy Spirit. As we look back into all of salvation history, to the Last Supper, to the crucifixion, to the resurrection of Jesus, so that the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, those sacred mysteries and their power to save are represented, represented here on this altar for the forgiveness of our sins. Brothers and sisters, as we say goodbye to our mom, Jean, today, our sense of loss leaves us numb and wondering what to do now that she's gone. We'll know this. Jesus Christ is the way. Gene Simons knew this well. Jesus Christ is the truth. Gene Simons knew this well. And Jesus Christ is the life. And Gene Simons knew this very well. So from now on, as, as we see throughout our lives, someone wearing a WWJD what would Jesus do bracelet or t-shirt or hat? Imagine not only what would Jesus do, but what would Gene do? Because we'll probably come up with the same answer. And if, and if we follow Christ like Gene Simons did and faithfully trust in his mercy, we have the hope that one day we will enjoy eternity life, eternal life with Jesus in heaven because the souls of the just are in the hands of God, just like our mother Jean. Simon says,